Um, we are going to begin tonight with a news brief from Bloomberg earlier this week. OpenAI is releasing a new artificial intelligence tool that's designed to carry out time-consuming online research for users about everything from complex science questions to car recommendations, expanding the startup's portfolio of AI agents that act on a person's behalf. The service, called Deep Research, will be available to certain paying customers through OpenAI's ChatGPT chatbot online, the company said in a blog post on Sunday. So Ben, I attended an event demoing this in DC last week. Um, Sam Altman and others from OpenAI debuted this product. Very interesting morning downtown. It seems to me this product is actually a very big deal, and I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been more fanfare related to what's to, like on display here. Well, 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 what, did, what did they demo? Like, what would tell me about this? I mean, you're, now that you're a big shot rolling, rolling with uh, lowercase Sam, um, well, what, <laughs> lowercase what was Sam the presentation like with a bunch of legislative staffers? Um, well, they demoed a couple different problems that they gave deep research and similar to what you wrote about on Stratechery, like laid out exactly what they want. Um, I think it was related to the confirmation process. They gave them a, a topical DC politics question. And um, and then you just watched the problem basically so work itself. Did, did people actually sit there for like however long it took to, for no, the problem they, to run? They did it. They said it. This is like the, the cooking show trick. Like we're going to give this a problem and then we're just going to pull it out f fully baked out of the oven uh, 30 seconds later. And that's what they did. But the work that it generated was very comprehensive and professional and looked like something that I would rely on in my professional life. And I just frankly didn't know that we had hit that point yet. And now it's here and deep research is available to everybody. And I used it to prep for Sharp China earlier today. And so it just seems like the sort of work that you would give an entry level employee, except it does it better than any entry level employee. They also had another demo where it was like a small business looking to expand in different markets and it fed it a bunch of different PDFs and asked it to analyze the strengths and weaknesses in various markets around the country and what would be the best place to expand. And like, again, that's work that would take an entry level employee a week, 10 days. And the open AI product did it in about, I think 20 minutes was it was, that was the one where they were like, we're going to just pretend that this is fully baked and out of the oven but it produced really high quality work. So uh, I know you experienced similar things playing with the Apple earnings this week and published the results on Stratechery. I kind of can't believe that we're already here. Yeah, I mean, the there, there's a, a few things going on, I think. Uh, number one, I think by and large, and maybe you can speak for the room. I mean, it sounds like you said as legislative aides, which are, you know, the reality is Washington, D.C. has always been run by a bunch of 20-year-olds. Um, if yeah. you've ever worked on Capitol Hill, I did a long time ago. I did an internship uh, ages, and uh, there's was plenty of people my age running around. I could promise you that much. Um, we looked up to the 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 old people that were like 25 years old. So, mm -hmm. um, And I believe Microsoft's Doug, Bur Doug Burgum was in the room, the new Secretary of Interior, so that's exciting. Yeah. So uh, the yeah. I, so I, I'm curious. Did, was there a sense that people were also shocked that this was possible, or was there maybe a little bit more of a oh, okay, this 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 makes sense as sort of the the next step? Um, it was more the latter. It was sort of like okay, this makes sense. And frankly, I think people have had their socks knocked off so consistently over the last two years that like our senses are dulled to new products. Um, and so particularly afterwards, there are some people who are there who are tweeting about it, who are like, yeah, it was impressive, but not that big a deal. Um, and I just, I look at it and I'm like, well, this is going to do the work of all kinds of people throughout the economy. If companies want to go that direction and it seems like it should be a bigger deal. Yeah. I, I, I think you're, I think you're more right than, than they are. There's a bit where if you've been following the space, it's not a total shock. Uh, Google actually released what they also call deep research uh, in December. And frankly, at 
it's not very good. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's you, you, that they actually announced a new one today. I haven't yet used it using Gemini two to do deep research. The one previously was one point five, but it suffers from. So so what's what's happening by and large? This is sort of the agentic workflow to an extent that we're talking about. You're asking a question. It is going out and basically surfing the web on your behalf, which itself is an important point that we should, you know, should come back to. Mm -hmm. And it's collecting a bunch of information. And then it's basically producing a report from that information. My big takeaway, again, with the caveat, I have not yet used Gemini to, uh, to do this. It literally just came out a couple hours ago is, uh, is O3 is that's the news here. It's capability to sort of go over this information and collect it in sort of a cogent and approachable way is remarkable. And I think there's, there, you know, when all these announcements come out, people are a little overwrought online, like PhD level. I'm like, I, I mean, I guess I have a little, I don't even interact with a bunch of PhD students. I do have a little higher Not standards that than that, I think. Um, <laughs> but college level, I think is yeah. reasonable. Like this, you know, the, to go out and say, you know, to use the Apple earnings example, go, go out and, and, you know, I did two examples. So the first one was give me a summary of Apple's or, or, or you know, analyze Apple's earnings for me. And I asked it to sort of like reference to checkery, but it was a, a fairly brief prompt. We'll have a link to the update You can go and see what my prompt was. And it was fine. It was kind of just like a summary of their earnings. And you sort of got the high level takeaways that were definitely influenced by the spin Apple was putting on the earnings in their earnings call. Mm -hmm. But that's what we get most of the time from this analysis. People go through and they read, that's why they they read the earnings call and they write a summary of what happened and it's mostly management spin, but that's because the way the information is presented and it's not, it it was, I would say it was useful. Like now it was is it an authoritative source of understanding Apple? No, not at all. But if I just needed a, I need a, 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 a few thousand word document to just get me up to speed on what management presented about Apple's results, definitely useful. You got an overview of sort of what, what, what was happening in a more readable format than necessarily going through and reading all the questions and answers. It was organized and, and summarized. The second one was a little more interesting in that, I, so my process here was because I had dithering first, uh, first thing I did when I woke up, uh, when I record dithering at 8 a.m., I woke up, I read through the earnings transcripts because I feared we were going to talk about it a little bit on dithering. And immediately from the transcript, I had a few takes. So my, my takes were, wow, the iPhone was down and yet they had record revenue the services is amazing, right? Like, which isn't a new take. It's not a fresh take, but it's notable that the the company that's been all about iPhone, iPhone, iPhone. And, you know, you go back six, seven years, it's like 65% of revenue in the the December quarter could just be fine with the iPhone actually declining year over year. It's just a testament on one of many markers on this road, but really to how powerful the, you know, the services segment is. And they're just a consistently growing business, no matter what happens with their products. That's actually pretty impressive. So that's number one. Number two is China was was bad. They're down 11%. China's been bad consistently, at least for the last few quarters. You're like, well, but wasn't that long ago? China was super far up. But I knew, because I've written about this and I've been following it a long time, the reason they were up a few years ago is because Huawei's chips got banned. And Huawei had wiped out the other high-end competitors, Samsung in particular. And so Apple was basically in a void where they're the only high-end option, at least for a couple of years. And so they had this huge bump up. But I recalled, because I had been following this and writing about Apple earnings every quarter for 12 years now, that they actually were in a lull in 2018, 2019, around that time as well. And actually, they've kind of been in a low since the initial explosion with the iPhone 6. So that and so that my immediate response to China being down was people aren't are going to look at this. They're not going to go back far enough. The reality is this is a long term trend, not a short term trend. The China market just isn't a growth market for Apple. And 
actually the the 2020 21 era was an aberration, aberration for yeah. external reasons right um we're going to get back to the model I, i'm basically summarizing my my <laughs> analysis of apple's earnings um number 3 was that apple cited apple intelligence as potentially driving sales which immediately conflicted with number 2 which is if china's super far down and china doesn't have super doesn't have ai intel you know apple ai which car, what's the cart what's the horse here right it, there's a correlation that right, i didn't agree with their analysis of of the causation so now i am a human llm that has been ingesting information about apple and earnings and all these sorts of things so i just quickly scanned through the earnings and immediately had these three takeaways and yeah. uh and so my second prompt to deep research was Give me an analysis of Apple's earnings. And by the way, I think these are the three most important points. Uh, number one, just the services bit. It's it's worth calling out. Number two, the China problem. And it probably goes back further because the Huawei ban, chip ban, was was, a, was this sort of external sort of interrupt, secular interruption. And then number three, uh, the Apple intelligence story seems overstated X, Y, Z. Uh, analyze the earnings with sort of these points in mind. Mm -hmm. And I thought that analysis was really good. Uh, it still wasn't, you know, fortunately, I think as good as my analysis, the writing, it, it goes on too long. It's not really dense in information. I think one of trajectory strengths is a good trajectory article is every sentence is sort of, I, I think there. I think good writing Critical. just has its own its its own momentum, and and every sentence should be pushing you forward and adding, layering on new information, and not there shouldn't be sort of em emptiness sort of in there. There's a quite a bit more emptiness sort of in mm. in I think these results, and I also don't think there was any novel insight. It was insightful. But that's because I infused the critical insight into it with the prompt to sort of start. And even then, I think it's still got a couple of things I, I, I don't think were right um, that were sort of based on more conventional wisdom or it, it, it I told it to reference old trajectory stuff and it would like over reference some sort of old things. Mm -hmm. That said, I thought it was good. Like yeah. it, it, it was it like if I were working in say, you know, or I were a small scale investor or something and I wanted an analysis along these lines, like if I were to have sort of a research intern or, or a, a new, new employee and I wanted them to generate a report, this is a solid report. Is, right. is if it you're going into a meeting and want to be sort of briefed on the issues and capable of holding a conversation about Apple's earnings and Apple's future in China, like this report does the job in a pretty solid way. It's not stratechery analysis, but it, was also like I'm very biased to say it's not just <laughs> analysis, but but um, but there's a few there's a few takeaways here, and, and actually your your uh, let's come back to your example, like going into a meeting, because I think that's another one that I want to get to that I think was was really beneficial to me. Um, the it, it's just the and this is the the weird thing, like this it takes me it took me back a bit to the original Chat GPT moment where. It was just so startling that it wrote in paragraphs and sort of like uh, was well-rounded that it mm -hmm. took a few days to sort of dive deeper and see like what it's actually like. Is it actually making sense here? It's saying a lot of stuff sort of very confidently. There's an aspect of the quality of this output that is well-formatted, is well-organized, and is sort of cogent in a way that it it. it, it can potentially play tricks on you. And I have another example of where it sort of really dropped the ball. Uh, but it, it, it like it matters. It's very convincing. It, like it, and the, the sort of the, the way, and I, to me, this is the reasoning aspect of O3 really coming out. It's going back, it's recycling, it's going through the, you know, all its sources, but it's mm -hmm. reorganizing itself to be very cogent and consumable in a way that's sort of very convincing. And if you think about the concern about, a, uh, you know, you can see how this could be a problem where it, yeah. it just it, it 
Well, hallucinations we humans... can be dangerous because it's also like very comprehensive and thorough, and so you get lulled into a false sense of security with the output. That's right. <laughs> so I had to be. Yeah, careful. we have a heuristic in our minds that if it's well written and well organized, and there are citations. it's also probably yeah. all true. Yeah, there are citations <laughs> and sort of all the, all those sorts of things. Um, but you know, I think I think just a few takeaways on those two bits were the quality difference between. So the the overall writing and organization was pretty solid between both of them. Mm-hmm. The insight level between the two I thought was pretty stark, but that insight came from the prompt. Like 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 yeah. where where you know I think there's a um that is always been the case with LMs, the quality of your output is downstream from the prompt, but that seems dramatically expanded in this case where if you give it a really a, a clear direction, a clear thesis, and I think you, you, you put my line in here in, in the show notes, like the capability of deep research to fill in a thesis is really strong. It's capability to generate a thesis is, is still, you know, there really wasn't a thesis in the first, the That's first good. summary. It was, it That's was just a, a summary. Yeah. We don't, 